Travis Ray. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call this meeting to order the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for November 22nd, 2022. Can I get the roll call, please? Colleen Braun. Here. Mayor Marion. Here. Dave, Commissioner Warnick. Here. Commissioner Pearson. Here. Let the record show we have a quorum. Commissioner Warnick, if you can lead the pledge, please. Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would bow your heads for a brief prayer. Father God, I come to you tonight on behalf of our town, Lord. I ask that you watch over our citizens. I ask that you watch over our elected body, Lord. Be with us as we are here this evening and as we leave. And over the holidays, be with our families, as well as the families throughout the town of Rising Sun, as well as our first responders that will be out, uh, and uh, as well as our military that are here and overseas. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. First on the agenda is a... Uh, summary of uh, approval of uh, the town meeting video summary. Town Administrator, do you have that? Yes, I do. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do, however, is if you recall at the last town meeting, we passed an ordinance making changes to the way we handle certain aspects of general administration. One of them was the implementation of uh, a concept called a consent agenda. And organizations will employ a consent agenda when there are things that are rather straightforward. So let me give you an example of that. Let's say you had five items on the agenda. One of them might be pay the bills, uh, some other things like that, that the elected body can decide to take one vote to approve the consent agenda and all the items that are on the consent agenda automatically get approved so that you don't have to have start stop five times in your meeting process. So it's a way of making your meetings more efficient. What I have up here on the screen is um, in that in that concept here, uh, under consent agendas here, again, it's done to basically streamline the meeting. So under normal, number four. And so using that as the first item of business when you open up the meeting and address the consent agenda is the presiding officer would ask if anyone on the board of commissioners would wish to remove an item from the consent portion of the agenda. Now, any commissioner may request that an item be removed from the consent portion of the agenda for any reason, such as to discuss an item in more detail, query the item, or they might intend to vote no on the identified item, but yes for the remaining items on the consent portion of the agenda. Any items requested for removal must be removed. So this is not something where a board member makes a motion and somebody has to second it. If any of the city members of the board want something off the consent <clears throat> agenda, they just ask. They just say, I'd like to have it removed from the, the consent agenda. That doesn't mean that it's not addressed at the meeting. It just means it's placed at a different location on the agenda. So to get, you know, a little bit more clarity on that. I gave you the, the example of five items. And when they talk about the uh, commissioner might intend to vote no on one item on the consent agenda, but they don't <clears throat> want to have the whole consent agenda go, they don't want to vote no on the whole agenda. So let's say you had town meeting minutes, or in this case, our video summary minutes on the consent agenda, and a motion to do something really simple, you know, maybe it's pay the bills or whatever. If an elected official wanted to have more conversation about a particular bill, or even the meeting 
uh, summary. They could ask to have it off the agenda because they don't want it to be just a all in favor of approving the consent agenda say aye, because they want to have more conversation. Or they have a strong position of opposing one of the items on the agenda. They want it to come off the consent agenda be voted on by itself someplace else in the regular agenda, but then the presiding officer can take a motion to approve the revised consent agenda. Now, it's a concept that we wrote into our documents. Um, there are times when we might get three or four items that are really straightforward, and they're, they're on there just simply because there has to be an official ratification of something. It's a way of streamlining it, but it doesn't handcuff you to keep it on that agenda. You can always have it move to another portion. So that generally <clears throat> is the summary of how a consent agenda works. So with that, you could now, you know, in this particular case, you only have one item on the agenda, um, and you could make a motion to approve the consent agenda if it passes, any of the items that are listed, in this case there's only one, would be approved. Before you do that, I'd like to just go over what you're looking at, the um, town meeting video summary. This is something that we've talked about for many years now. Starting in 2013, the town started videotaping all of its town meetings. In doing that, it negates the reason to spend a lot of time doing town meeting minutes mm -hmm. because town meeting minutes don't capture every word that is said at a meeting, but the video does capture every word. So in that light, the video has more value to documenting the meeting than what meeting minutes would do. However, if someone were to ask did you guys ever vote or can you give me the information on when you ever did something at a meeting that they're interested in? We would have to give them, you know, think back in the day, back in 2014, when we were having two and a half hour meeting, meetings, three hours, having to use, Dennis used to have to have two tapes, you know, loaded up and ready to go. Imagine giving that to somebody and saying, somewhere in that meeting, I think towards the beginning, is where that item was talked about. So what we've created is a, uh, a town meeting video summary that basically takes the town meeting agenda and then date stamps in the video where that conversation took place. So when Dennis posts the videos up on the YouTube, Juanita will watch the video the next day and then just get the date stamp of when the town talked today about the consent agenda, public presentations, old business. There would be, be a date stamp on it. So if somebody was looking for the adoption of an ordinance or a resolution, we would say it was addressed under, in this particular case, item seven uh, was it adopting resolution 2022-20, there will be a date stamp on that. So the person doesn't have to go through the whole <clears throat> video and start and stop to try to get to that point. So you're not adopting town meeting minutes, but you're adopting the summary, the, the time stamp summary, which will be married to the town video. And it's all, it's all done to help with transparency, to help people be able to find what they're looking for in the, uh, in the videos. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, you guys to consider adoption of the consent agenda. Do any of you guys have any questions? No. No. Is there a motion? I move that we adopt the consent agenda. Second. Sure. It's been moved and seconded. No discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Moving on to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is uh, the uh, approve a, a public presentation from the Cecil County Department of Emergency Services. Town Administrator, do you have that? Yes, I do. Um, 
we, we have some folks from the Cecil County Department of Emergency Services that are going to basically give you a little overview of the resolution that you're considering under new business. <clears throat> Let me state that since I've been with the town of Rising Sun, this is the third time, actually the second time, that we've addressed an update to the um, hazard mitigation plan. In summary, and I know the, uh, the emergency services will highlight this too, if you remember in the past when we would get really bad snowstorms, and if they were declared an emergency, that means FEMA would provide funds to reimburse the town for certain things that had to be done. And it doesn't have to be a snowstorm. It could be any number of hazards that happen in a community. You can run into a problem and likely not qualify for FEMA reimbursements if you don't have a hazard mitigation plan. So instead of the town of Rising Sun creating its own hazard mitigation plan, we basically just become various portions and sections of the overall Cecil County hazard mitigation plan along with all the other towns, incorporated towns of Cecil County. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to John. Thank you, Kelvin. Um, actually, I'm going to, this is the plan. So if you haven't seen the plan, it is 500 plus pages, I think 523 pages. Um, and I've tabbed um, some of the actions that are here for, for um, Rising Sun. So I'm going to introduce Michael Berth. Michael is our emergency planner. He's brand new. If you knew Ashley before, he's taken Ashley's place. Um, and he has jumped in incredibly. And, and um, so I'm going to let him this is now his baby, so I'm going to go ahead and let him make the presentation. Hello. Uh, thank you, Calvin, for the brief overview of the hazard mitigation plan. He, Calvin is exactly correct. Uh, this 500-page monstrous binder um, does describe overview of our county's hazards. Uh, weather is one. Another could be related to the dam uh, issues. Another could be onset of flooding which you guys have witnessed and have gone through this past summer along with other towns in the county as well so this hazard mitigation plan is basically instead of rising sun coming up with their own hazard mitigation plan which there has been input in from all the towns from about a year or so ago so this plan has been in the process for about a year or so that we would incorporate all the towns together into this big, huge, nice, awesome binder. So it describes all of the hazards in the county. Uh, and we're here to assist with the local communities as well. Uh, and that's why we're here. And you're, you are correct. We've probably been here a couple of times. Hazard mitigation plan is every five years. So as soon as we've adopted this, we actually are going to, in turn, roll the tables and start the process for the next five-year plan, which is called the, uh, one of the steps is called a thyra, so threat assessment, identification, and risk assessment. So that's one of the processes that we will be conducting following this adoption. Um, do you have any questions uh, about this, of what you are adopting? So in order for us to get... Uh, but in order for us to get any, he talked about public assistance and individual assistance after a disaster, um, any hazard mitigation grants, if you guys want to take some actions down along the streams or rivers to, to mitigate anything um, and, and reduce any of the hazards, we have to have this, this document in place or FEMA will not even consider it. So we've had it. We're a little late getting it done this year, but we've had lots of changes uh, both around the county and internally. <coughs> so we're, I mean, we're okay with it now. We, we've gotten pre-approval at this point, awaiting adoption. Um, so the resolution you have uh, is for adoption. And I know that I've worked with Calvin on a couple of incidents uh, in the past and worked with Chip very closely on, on several other items going up forward. But let me just say, this is the first step for us at the county level to get more involved uh, to the point where we hope to bring the municipalities, the Calvins of all of the municipalities together to kind of talk about what other actions we can be taking uh, besides just getting something in a, a plan on paper. 
I mean, it's got some specific actions like such as cybersecurity issues, flood mitigation issues for your water and your sewer, uh, were some of the, the major actions in this plan. Um, so adoption, we have to have all of the towns to say, yes, this is our plan. Um, as part of being in the county, we're adopting the county plan as our plan. So you have had input along the way, and um, I hope uh, you guys have no problems or questions. I mean, we're open for questions, so. No, I'm fine. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Do I have a motion to uh, adopt the resolution adopting the Cecil County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2022 Hazard Mitigation Plan update? I make a motion to adopt resolution 20. There's a, a motion and a second. Oh. Is there any discussion? We haven't made a motion, though. We have not made, we, Augie was in the process of making a motion. Oh, okay. Okay, I make a motion that we accept resolution 2022-20, adopting the Cecil County Hazard Mitigation Plan. Second. Now there's a motion and a second, thank you. Uh, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming out and for hey, your hard work on, with all of Cecil County's town, town administrator. Yes, I, I just wanted to add a couple things to echo what uh, John was saying. Um, we've never had a chance, and I know Chief Peterson would um, agree with me on this, to thank John and the whole emergency management team at the county for the uh, tremendous amount of support that they have given the town of Rising Sun over the years. We had the flooding back in September uh, with the trailer park. They were right there with us taking phone calls all through the night. Um, more recently, um, you've heard me report at past meetings about our issues with the wastewater treatment plant and the unfunded MS4 mandate where we got to spend $1.7 million by 2025 to reduce our nutrient footprint in the town of Rising Sun and working with the county emergency management and our engineering firm, we have reached the next round of about $5 million of funding through FEMA to not only decommission the lagoon, which is something that we were always facing, a multi-million dollar expense at some point now that we built the new wastewater treatment plant, but it's also going to allow us to turn the lagoon basically into a wetlands buffer and we can check off the box on the MS4 and eliminate the $1.7 million expense. So I want to thank John and, and you know, the county as a, uh, a whole and helping us with it. So that's, that's, that would be a tremendous achievement if we can get funding for that, for that project. Let me just say that it's been a, every all, every time I've worked with Calvin, it's been a real pleasure to work with him. Um, I mean, he's got a lot of insight that sometimes I don't have. Also, in some of these items, um, and you know, I, all I can say is we need to do a better job of being partners. Um, not that we have done a bad job mm -hmm. at all, but I think all all of the towns um, have their little projects going on here and there. But I think that they can all benefit by working with one another and, and the county. And land use and development has been an awesome, an awesome partner with us also on the whole community readiness and, and that sort of thing. So thank you all for your consideration today, and I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to all. And take care of your family. Same to you, Joe. Michael, thank you. Mayor. Okay. Do we have citizens' input? Yeah, it looks like he dropped off. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs>
I don't think I don't think we have anybody. Brenda, well, no, we, do you have anything? Yeah. Yeah, let's we just, can just ask the three guys. Yeah, I was gonna say we can just poll the audience. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you have any input? I just have a question. Okay. Um, I know a while back. Do Thank I need to come up here and nah. myself well, well, you want to be here? Oh, yeah, you got to. Yeah. Um, do you need for me my name? name? Just name it if you're town resident. Um, I'm Emily Kleiner, town resident. I just have a question. I know that a few months ago now, I think we adopted or rejoined the circuit rider program, and I wondered if there were any updates to that. Our application did not get approved. Oh, okay. Yeah. And let me just say the reason why is they have a limited amount of money, and they don't seem to add money to add new circuit riders. So they huh. end up funding all the circuit riders they oh. already had. So no, we, our, our joint application with Perryville did not get accepted okay. or get funded, I should I'm say. I'm sorry to hear that. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. The mayor's needing to be let in. Oh, the mayor needs to be let in. <laughs> uh, he's in. Mayor, are you there? There we go. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Well, we went through the citizen's input, so if you want to move on to staff reports or if you would like me to just proceed with the agenda. Well, I was just worried about going in and out. I might lose my signal, but uh, okay. I'm back. So staff reports, town administrator, do you have a report this evening? Um, the only thing I wanted to make sure that everybody was clear on is the trash and recycling schedule for this year. Um, as you know, on the back end of our agendas all the time, um, we always put, you know, the holidays during the year where there won't be any collection on that day. The only difference is Christmas and New Year's fall on a Sunday this year. So I want to make sure there's no confusion, even though the trash company confused us a little bit, because Christmas falls on a Monday, and trash collection for that week. We're not talking about the Friday before Christmas. The Friday before Christmas will be the same trash collection. Trash collection on Monday will result in our, oh, I'm sorry, Christmas being on Monday will result in our trash collection being on Saturday which is consistent with what they've always done in the past. Now, the reason for that, because we always get residents ask us this, is that we're not the only client they have. So if they happen to have a community where they have to do trash collection on Monday and the holiday hits, everybody falls back one. So the point is the holiday does <coughs> not have to fall on our scheduled trash pickup day to have it affected. So again, Christmas is on a Monday, trash collection will be on Saturday. However, New Year's falls on a Monday, but they're doing trash collection on Friday. Don't ask me why, but that's what they told us they're doing. So I wanted to make that clear. Christmas trash collection is on the following Saturday, and New Year's trash collection and recyclables is on the following Friday. And that's all I have. Chief? Um, in the uh, previous two weeks, we've had approximately 120 calls for service. There's been no significant trends um, during that time period. <clears throat> Over the uh, last few weeks, and probably longer, <clears throat> excuse me, we've received uh, many complaints of speeding on uh, Wilson Avenue, well, Wilson Avenue and, uh, and Main Street. Um, on those two roads, we've installed some radar speed signs, which will give us a, a, an indication of what the uh, average speed is on each roadway. It also gives uh, the motoring public an idea of how fast they're going. And with that being said, if you are exceeding the speed limit by that sign, be prepared to deal with an officer somewhere in that area because the amount of patrols in those areas has been increased um, to get control of what, you know, uh, problems we are having. Um, over the past few months, we've had numerous complaints in the Valley View development of vehicles that were illegally parked. Um, 
I, I'm glad that many of the neighbors in that area were patient enough to wait for us to get all of the probable cause that we needed. Um, we do have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that a violation of the crime has committed, has been committed. So uh, yesterday we took enforcement action. We removed six vehicles and uh, approximately six to seven um, citations were issued in that neighborhood, freeing up a bunch of the parking spots that uh, people were uh, complaining about. That's not the end of it. There's others that are designated for enforcement. Um, we just have to continue to build that probable cause um, in that case. Lastly, the holidays are upon us. Shopping season has started with many of your Black Friday sales online and, in, and many of the, the local businesses. Law enforcement needs help. We can't do it alone. So while you're out and about, be aware of your surroundings. And if you see something that's not normal, out of place, or a criminal violation of some sort, feel free to call us. We need you to call us and tell you what us, tell us what you saw. We can't be everywhere. Um, that'll make a safer community for all of us. So if you can, if you see something that's out of the ordinary, call and here in the town of Rising Sun, dial 911. That's the easiest way to get a hold of an officer. Don't try the Facebooks or the text messages. Those create a delay in dispatching and getting the information to the officers. I need you to dial 911 if you see something that just does not seem right to you. And that's my report, unless I have any questions. On behalf of the elected body, we did want to uh, congratulate Chief Peterson on his 15th year anniversary with the Town of Rising Sun. We certainly thank him and his officers for all they do for our community. Uh, congratulations, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Assistant Town Administrator, is Judy there this evening? Uh, no, Mayor, but um, a couple items she wanted to bring up is the Winterfest planning is going well. Um, you see on our schedule uh, that Winterfest is, is scheduled for Saturday, December 3rd. Um, we're bringing back a lot of the, uh, the very popular activities that we had um, in the past with the ice skating and the snow <coughs> cannons and hot chocolate and, and stuff along those lines. We've also um, added additional um, flexibility and ability for carriage rides. Um, Juanita, or Travis, Juanita, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we are right now open enrollment for town residents to be able to uh, reserve the carriage rides because there's a limited amount of carriage rides. And so we opened it up to town residents first. And there's a That's correct. That ended on the 16th. So okay. it's open to um, others as well. Okay. So anyone who's looking to reserve a carriage ride, uh, please reach out to the town hall staff uh, in the next week or so uh, to try to get your reservation for that. And that <coughs> concludes uh, the assistant town administrator's report. Thank you. Uh, town attorney, do you have a report this evening? Good evening, everybody. I don't have anything in specifics. We've been working on a lot of the issues that's going to go before the Planning Commission. And uh, by the end of next week, I think we'll be able to take some movement on this 16 uh, Main Street property and uh, start moving towards our own tax sale on that. So uh, we've been doing a lot of behind the scenes and prep work. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for the town attorney? All right. Thanks, Jay. Moving forward into the mayor's report, my report is pretty brief. Uh, I wanted to uh, say that the elected body and myself attended the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Law enforcement appreciation. I think it's lost him again. Yeah, I was actually going to. Sorry, I'm, I'm back, guys. Sorry about that. We, uh, the elected body and myself attended the uh, Cecil County Chambers Law Enforcement Appreciation Dinner. Uh, we honored one of our officers. It was a wonderful event, uh, spotlighting many different uh, Cecil County uh, first responders, uh, not only law enforcement, but also uh, fire and EMS. 
we certainly thank them for all that they do, not just for uh, Rising Sun, but for all of Cecil County. Uh, myself and Chief Peterson attended a uh, farewell for Council, Cecil County Councilman Bill Kautz and uh, James Massey, who is leaving Cecil County. Uh, he is the current uh, Cecil County manager who is leaving that post. Uh, it was a great evening celebrating both of them, uh, and we certainly wish them well uh, in whatever their new endeavors will be. Uh, I also attended uh, yesterday uh, our first inductee at the Rising Sun High School Wall of Fame. This is a partnership between uh, the town of Rising Sun and uh, the Rising Sun High School to spotlight those alumni members who have gone above and beyond. Uh, the first inductee was uh, Luke Garvin. Uh, he is a Rising Sun High School graduate of 1997. Uh, he founded the Rising Sun High School Junior Wrestling Program in 1999, and the program is still running strong uh, with hundreds of children uh, learning not only wrestling and techniques, but also how to be a respectable citizen, um, and uh, they are also taught how to give back to their community. Uh, so we congratulate uh, Luke Garvin uh, on his win uh, as the first inductee of the Rising Sun High School Wall of Fame. Uh, last but not least, our winter extravaganza is upon us. Uh, it will be, as the town administrator said, on the 3rd. We are super excited to have you. This year, as a new activity, we have added a snowboard simulator, uh, which should be pretty cool. Um, in addition to ice skating, uh, carriage rides, most of the downtown businesses will be open. Uh, there will be hot chocolate, and uh, there is some snow in the forecast. Uh, so we are excited about that. This year we also added a lighted tractor parade down Main Street. Uh, so the process will be uh, as soon as it starts to get dark, uh, right before we light the tree, uh, we will have a parade of tractors down Main Street that will be lighted. And then we will end the evening with the lighting of our town Christmas tree. Um, certainly thanks to Judy, her team, as well as Public Works and Chief Peterson for all their help and effort in uh, winter extravaganza. Um, the team has worked uh, really hard on getting things together, uh, including Public Works as well as our town administrator. Uh, and it should just be a great evening uh, had by all. Um, moving forward into Commissioner comments. Commissioner Braun. I have no report. Commissioner Pearson. I have no report now, but I will reserve. I want to speak later. Okay. Commissioner uh, Warnick. I have no report. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Pearson, did you want to speak now? Yeah. Um, as many of you know, we had uh, unfortunate incident back in the first part of November that uh, got the interest of many people very quickly. Uh, <clears throat> because of that, uh, a group of citizens has gotten, has gotten together and we're holding a town hall type meeting on December 1st at 6 p.m. at the American Legion uh, to discuss the incident there and also uh, the uh, continuing problem with West Coast mushrooms. Um, just asking everyone if you take the time, please attend. It can be a very informative meeting. That's all, Mayor. And uh, Commissioner Pearson, this was just formed by a group of citizens. It's not officiated by the town, correct? No, no. Okay, perfect. I just happened to be involved because I got it involved. Um, upcoming town meetings. This will be a new way for us to set, modify, or change our town's uh, schedule. Um, we do have uh, an upcoming meeting, and we're looking to potentially do it on December the 27th. Um, and if we can get the board's approval on that, that will move forward with one meeting in the month of December, um, and it will be on December the 27th. Is that correct, Town Administrator? <laughs> um, actually, no. The, the meeting... <laughs> I apologize. The, the, the meeting schedule that we have there is following the normal format. At our last town meeting, we adopted the ordinance change that gave the elected body the ability to set a schedule over an undetermined amount of time. We never determined 
what that schedule was going to be. So at every meeting under this section 12, there will be the opportunity for the presiding officer to ask if anybody would like to make changes to the pending meeting schedule. We are giving you um, six uh, dates throughout the future. So for instance, if the board wanted to say, we only want to meet the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday of every month, then you would vote on that, and at the next town meeting, those six items underneath would be modified to reflect it. So this is the way the meeting schedule is right now. If you want to take advantage of the ordinance change that gave you the ability to, to reduce the amount of times you're meeting to be more efficient, now's your time to do that. So you would essentially have a discussion on all these meeting dates with one December 27th being a couple of days after Christmas. Yeah, so, and also one thing I would say is, is this is one of those months where we have five Tuesdays, meaning that December 13th would actually be three weeks from today, and December 27th would be five weeks today from today. So you're talking potentially going over a month without a meeting. Um, I'm, well, <laughs> I was thinking we'd be better off to have one. Sorry, we'll be better off to have one on December 13th, <clears throat> which is three weeks from today, and then cancel the one on December 27th, which is right after Christmas, and likely to see light participation. Well, traditionally, we've never had the meeting between Christmas and New Year's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a suggestion that's totally different from this. Um, due to some things that we may have happen in the next three, four, three plus weeks, if we could have a meeting on the 20th of December, which would be before Christmas, and uh, it, it would give us four weeks, it would still, still keep us within the monthly schedule, but it would allow uh, us to, to be available for the, that, uh, those possible items that are coming up. So, so that I understand, you want to have a meeting on the 13th <coughs> and on December 20th? No, no. no. just December 20th, I think. Just December 20th. 20th. If right. I could intervene, like, the pet was so like, last schedule was like seven weeks and We wouldn't have videotaping. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, it does, it does, it would also be the same night as a county council meeting. I can, I can do that day this month, but it just doesn't seem no. right to break up the agenda of second and fourth. Uh, Dennis, this would be a one, this is the only... This is just a one-time thing. I yeah, and the only reason is because uh, the 13th is, it, is too close to something that we have potentially happening, okay. and the 27th is... Right, because I don't think it was discussed moving from the second or the Tuesday, right, Calvin? It, it, yeah. No, it wasn't directly discussed. I mean, yeah. I, you know, my whole life is geared. So, and those so two is mine. things are, so is mine. Uh, you know. I think, I think it also, yeah, I mean, um, I also heard Jane sigh knowing that that's the same as Port Deposit and Perryville. County, and Perryville and County Council all have meetings that night. Okay, well, okay. So we just want to stick with the 27th? Yeah, we'll have to go with the 27th. I don't want to get off the Tuesday cadence. Uh, yeah. What are what are what are we expecting, Augie? Um, I really don't want. Uh, I would not yeah. like discuss that at the moment. Okay. So, so you're looking. Really have, well, so we're building suspense to get people to the meeting. Yeah, you you're definitely canceling the thirteenth, correct? Yes. And okay. 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 And you're staying with the 27th. Yes. Okay. What about January 10th and January 24th? That's the second and fourth schedule that we're used to. Is there any one of them that you want to cancel? I mean, do we have things coming up that might require us to have two meetings, or? So here's here's the thing. Number so one, we don't need to cancel my, tonight if need my suggestion is to establish it, if something comes up at the meeting on the 27th, you have plenty of time to plug a date back in. 
So the, uh, I, what I'd rather not do is go meeting to meeting with it being ambiguous. So let me just throw this out there. Maybe you say that you're going to meet the, first, the second Tuesday of every month. And when you get to one of those second Tuesdays and you decide we got to meet also the fourth Tuesday, you've still given everybody two weeks' notice of that meeting. Right. I'll go along with that suggestion. Okay, I'll go along with the first or the second Tuesday. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a tongue twister to say that you want to say the first Tuesday, but it's it's the first scheduled meeting, but it's the second Tuesday. So we'll go with um, we're going to cancel December 13th meet the 27th, and then meet, schedule to meet the second Tuesday of every month, which would be January 10th and February 14th. Okay, and then cancel right. the 24th and 28th? Yes, at this time. Okay. Is that? That's my understanding of what you're saying. Yes. Yes. Uh, you you should probably do a motion. Yeah. To Everybody good with that? Yeah. I move that we cancel the December 13th meeting, conduct the 20, December 27th meeting, and then proceed with the second Tuesday of the month from there on out unless otherwise uh, needed, yeah. uh, which would entail January 10th and February 14th at this point, and then proceeding with the second Tuesday of the month or thereafter canceling the January 24th and February 28th meeting and any other fourth Tuesday meetings yep. unless otherwise needed. All right. Second. Is that a, there's a motion and a second? Any yes. more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Passes, thank you. Uh, you can see on the uh, agenda the trash, yard waste, and recycling schedule as well as uh, the upcoming holidays of Town Hall. Uh, is there anything else to come before the board this evening? I'm not, I, I, I guess we discussed it ad nauseum, the, just making sure people know that Winterfest, the date is uh, Saturday, December 3rd, 2022. All right, could I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make so a moved. motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.